This seaside promenade. This is the South China Sea. Connects all three resorts and uh, it's the entrance to Hong Kong Disneyland from the resorts. I know you're wondering. What's it really like to stay at Hong Kong Disneyland? Is that wrong? No, that was right. What's my line? <laughs> What's it really like to stay at Hong Kong Disneyland? We are checking out all three Hong Kong Disneyland hotels to tour the restaurants, pools, theming, our room, and a whole lot more. We are so pumped. It is, Let's we're go. in Hong Kong. We don't have a lot of time. That's, the, that's the South China Sea. We don't have a lot of time. But it's the South China Sea. That's true. We've made it to our first Here stop. This is the Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel, which it might look a little, little familiar. familiar. A little Floridian? Perhaps a little grand. <laughs> We were getting B-roll and Emma did make her first purchase. What'd you get, Emma? Possessed. Well, let's see if I can, oh, got it. Easy. Just a little something for myself. Why are you laughing? I'm not. She's really laughing. You don't love him? I'm a huge Duffy fan. It's been a little underground. I liked him before this trip and now, obviously, Duffy and Friends is my life, so. <laughs> You look like Mothman. <laughs> the Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel is themed to a seaside resort, which might seem a little familiar because that is also the theme of the Grand Floridian Hotel in Disney World. So it's got a very similar theme. The lobby's a little smaller, but feels equally grand and beautiful. I especially love the stained glass vibe at the tops of the chandeliers. I just think it's very beautiful. And of course, the vibes are made even better because there's live music playing. This hotel is characterized by Victorian architecture with a six-story lobby. Uh, you'll hear some live music. They have a jazz pianist or a five-piece band playing throughout the day. Now, this is the most expensive of the Hong Kong hotels, but not by much. No. All of the hotels are between they're 300 and 400 US dollars per yeah. night starting. So they're all kind of in like a, a moderate like a range. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of just pick your favorite because the prices really don't differ too much until you get into these suites. For the hotels, we're just gonna be doing a brief overview of the dining and recreation and themes so you can get a sense without getting too bogged down in those details. But if you wanna learn more about the hotels in detail, you can check out our post on allears.net where we'll be going into excruciating detail about these hotels. So if you wanna make that decision, then head on over there. Just off the lobby, you'll find one of the table service options, which is Walt's Cafe. This is a restaurant that has the kind of charm of the Victorian era and serves table service as well as buffets on the weekend, um, inspired by some of Walt's favorites. Another restaurant that you can find over here is gonna be Enchanted Garden, which is where you can find lots of international flavors. It's breakfast and lunch, and maybe you can even see some Disney friends while you're here. Another thing that you're gonna find at this resort is actually Bippity Boppity Boutique, and if that sounds familiar, it's because it is. We have very similar offerings over in the States with us, and it's where you get your prince or princess all dolled up. And unfortunately, it's like kid princes and princesses and not adults, despite my personal requests. Uh, at this hotel, you'll also have access to a sauna, steam room, and whirlpool as well. Let's talk pools. There's actually two here. There's one indoor, which we are kind of obssessed with. It's so nice. I want to go swim laps. I didn't it. bring my swimsuit, and I'm like, I wish I had. We can buy them. Indoor pool. The world is our oyster. We'll buy them. I'm not worried about Emma's that. Emma's will buy them attitude is going to be a real problem this trip, I think. My husband's concerned. That's not a joke. He really is. It's fine. There's also an outdoor pool and a 40 meter water slide over here and it's open and no one's here, which is just very different compared to Disney World. So we're both fascinated by that. You can also see the Disneyland Pier over here, which is an actual functioning pier because Disneyland sits right on the South China Sea. So I guess you could boat here. There's also a super cute playground that matches the hotel, which I wanna play on. Why did I grow up? Peter Pan was right. <laughs> the pool bar, though not open right now, is called Sea Breeze Bar and is located, of course, right by the pool. For those who are sport inclined, just, just like, like us. us. <laughs> that wasn't planned. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can uh, find a multi-court and a tennis court, and the multi-court has the little Toy Story aliens. Also, you can see over there a very big amenity of the hotel. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, we did just find a self-serve go-karting experience. There's a go-kart track, and you self-serve go-karting? She, I mean, I cannot stress enough, she's off to the races. Emma, how you feel about the go-karting? That was awesome. Why don't we have that? It's a good People question. People aren't. Well, I know why. So now that we're talking about transportation, like those go-karts that we saw in the deal, I figured we'd talk about getting to the Hong Kong Disneyland hotels. I have no words. <laughs> So obviously getting to Hong Kong can be a little daunting. Um, we flew 20 hours to get here. We flew four hours to LA and then another 16 from LA to Hong Kong. Um, and that can be very scary. If you want to learn more about the travel process in general, you can check out our perfect day in Hong Kong video where we take you through everything, some things to be considerate of if you plan to travel to Hong Kong. But I wanna talk a little bit about getting from the airport to here. To get to the hotels from the airport, you have a few options. There is a sort of transportation station across the sort of promenade if you cross in front of the park, there's a MTR, which is the subway train station kind of deal. There is a taxi drop off as well as like a coach bus station. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you can get here. If you take the MTR, the train, those tickets are relatively cheap, but you do have to transfer. So you'll be with your bags on a subway um, and transferring from one train to another. So you have to go to the main downtown station from the airport and then transfer to the Disneyland train station. Um, and it's a relatively quick ride because we're not very far from the airport here. It's also a 15 minute car ride. So whether you take a taxi or an Uber, um, Uber is available in Hong Kong. That's how we got here. It was about a $20, um, 20 US dollar ride over here. Um, very easy. And the taxis would be similar. Now taxis in Hong Kong are completely run by the government. They are regulated by the government. You will see three different kinds of taxis um, in three different colors. You can take any of them to get to Hong Kong Disneyland, although I believe the easiest and the cheapest is the Lantau taxi that services just this island. I did a lot of research. Now with the taxis or with Uber, just be prepared that your driver may not speak English. Our Uber driver did speak English, um, which made it easier for us to get here, but there, that is not a guarantee. They might only speak Cantonese. Um, it's just a good idea to have Google Translate downloaded just in case, although your driver should should understand Disneyland. Now, whether or not they take you to your exact hotel with that could be iffy. So have Google Translate downloaded in case you need it. Um, and then with the taxi drivers, they will call dispatch to translate for you if they need to. So obviously I know this can be scary, especially if you've never traveled across like the world before or even out of the country, but that's the kind of thing that just be ready to kind of deal with a little bit of a communication trouble and you'll be just fine. It's really only a 15 minute drive. So once you get on the road, it's easy. Now that said, even though your drivers might not speak English, all of the signage at the airport was in both Cantonese and English. So it was very easy for us to navigate the airport. And even the signage on the road was in Cantonese and English. If you're gonna rent a car, they do drive on the left side here. So just be prepared for that. Um, but all the signage that we have seen from the airport, the roads to here, has all been in Cantonese and English. And in Disneyland and in the airport, almost everyone we've spoken to has understood at least enough English to help us get around. Um, and we have had no trouble navigating at all. We're not going into downtown Hong Kong on this trip, unfortunately, so that could be a whole nother beast. But for Disneyland, we've had no trouble navigating Obviously we do not speak Cantonese. Um, so we've had no trouble navigating just using English. Now let's talk rooms at this hotel. So there are standard rooms, deluxe rooms, and sea view rooms, as well as kingdom club rooms, which is kind of their club level. Uh, those are rooms and suites. They offer a couple theme suites here, including the Cinderella suite and the Frozen suite. And we actually got a chance to tour the Frozen suite, which you can see from us right now. Go, Emma Quincy, go. Okay, let's take a look around the Frozen Suite. We're gonna move quick, because we don't have a ton of time in here. Hello. This is the first bathroom. There are two bathrooms in the suite. You've got little baby Anna on the wall and this wonderful Anna Elsa wallpaper, which we'll see again later. Then you've got a closet here where you can find a lot of shelving space, umbrellas, iron, hangers, laundry bags, things like that. And then we've also got Emma over there. There she is. We're having very fun, but we're rushing. I didn't even say that right. You've got your nice little beverage station when you come in. It's got Olaf and the Snogies, and you can see this amazing frozen wall mural with the girls looking so cute. 
Um, the drink station has got this kettle as well as some teacups. There's water, uh, bottled water for use in the room, a little Nespresso. And then under here, you've got even more mugs and dishware as well as your safe, your fridge. Uh, your ice bucket and everything like that. Cycling bin, of course, the couch is fully themed to Kristoff's sleigh, which is so cute. It's got some snowflake pillows on it and a little plush fen. Coffee table in this very spacious room. And the coffee table does have the frozen tea time that you can get brought to your room, which looks so cute. I wish we could eat it because it's adorable. Armchair in here as well. And this very nice side table. It does have a cabinet you can open up down here. Little portrait of Kristoff and Sven here. There is a balcony off of this room with your amazing view. We'll see another balcony in a second. Floor lamp, full standing mirror so you can see me do this. And also that, look at that. That's amazing. Uh, you've got your TV here that is just scrolling through some frozen images. A little console, these cabinets and drawers are empty for your storage use. And then kind of the cream of the crop for kiddos in this room is this adorable little play corner that comes with a lot of like frozen books and toys. A window that looks out onto this landscape of frozen, the frozen landscape of Arendelle or outside of Arendelle. Then you've got the little cuckoo clock. And of course, all this is themed to like a log cabin with a little Olaf decal on the wall. And now we'll head into the master bedroom. Okay, then heading off the main room into the bedroom, we have this amazing frozen themed room all the way down to a painted ceiling. Two beds, uh, they are queen beds and they've got all these like Norwegian details. There's a side table in the middle, but not on the sides. You've got some drawer space here as well as a writing pad. And then the best part about this room is the art on the walls. Anna and Elsa are above each bed. You've got this amazing Arendelle print and this photograph of the fam, which I love. There's a balcony off the bedroom as well. And you can see it's got that same great view of the Mickey garden maze, the rest of the hotel and out to the South China Sea and Hong Kong. It's unbelievable. We've got mirror here so you can see me do this. Ooh, little desk, got a dresser. These drawers are plenty spacious, uh, TV. There is a closet back here behind this door. And inside you can find your frozen sweet robes, complete with ones for little ones, as well as frozen slippers, a luggage rack, and some pillows. Sorry we're speeding through this. We don't have a ton of time in here. The master bathroom uh, is right next to this little bench, which is a great place for luggage, little Olaf art. And the master bathroom has this unbelievable uh, on an Elsa wallpaper again. You've got an amazing little vanity here um, to get ready, which would be such an amenity staying here. Full tub with the pink marble. I love these little touches that feel very royal. So it feels like you might actually be staying as a guest of Anna and Elsa. Um, on the sink, you have an Elsa color and Anna color cup, as well as some Elsa and Anna cups, an Elsa toiletry bag, lots of like little hand towels, everything you might need in the bathroom, trash can, step stool, little rug. And again, kind of got that marble finish here. Then you have the separate toilet room, which has Anna and Elsa on the wall, uh, as well as your commode, very important. And don't worry, there is a shower as well, past another frozen robe, and we end up with the shower, which is this pink marble. There is only the detachable shower head in here. There's no waterfall shower head, as we've seen in the other hotel rooms. Um, so just something to be aware of, but you do have your uh, H2O products in here as well. The Kingdom Club is going to be a bit more expensive. If you do opt to stay there, you will get access to personalized vacation planning, complimentary snacks and beverages, and bedtime stories with Disney friends. Regardless of the room you stay in, prices do vary by date and room type. For a stay in November, rooms start at this hotel at 3,060 Hong Kong dollars, which is around 392 US dollars, and range up to around 9,000 Hong Kong dollars or 1,150 US dollars. Now, regardless of which hotel you're staying in, check-in is going to be at 3 p.m. and check-out is going to be at 11 a.m. Now, when you do check-in, you're gonna need your passport and you're also gonna need a credit card to add for incidentals. And speaking of, if you are traveling, make sure to let your bank know just so that way there's no flags and everything moves smoothly once you're here. Hey, what you doing? You're in the maze. You're in the maze. There's a garden maze. And it has things hidden in it, like a little scavenger hunt. We're they have Q QR codes on them, which we're trying to figure out. But it's not a very difficult maze, which is good. I was able to find Emma without too much trouble. And it's hard to see from the ground but it does have Mickey's face in it. Yeah, I've seen little kids wandering through here just looking so lost. This is Cookie Ann and she's cooking and that's what she made. Ah, that's so cute. Hi Pluto. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> 
All of our friends are in there. <laughs> Aww, you look so cute, Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> All of the hotels do have merchandise stops where you can grab a lot of the merchandise you'll see in the park. Now, just like in Disney World, if there's something you have your eye on, we recommend buying it in the park because you never know if it'll actually be there. Like <laughs> these stuffy glasses I'm bought immediately. But don't worry because I bought them here. Yeah. So they'll be everywhere. <laughs> We're also here at Crystal Lotus. This is a dining experience that's really upscale. It is award-winning and it allows you to taste the four major culinary regions of China and it has that famous Disney dim sum. At this hotel, you also have access to Storybook Playroom, which is a playroom themed to walking right into the pages of a storybook. It's geared towards kids two to 12 and has activities, games, crafts, toys, and puzzles. Now, this is not a drop-off situation. Those kiddos do have to be accompanied by a parent, but it's a super fun amenity to have those fun kid activities. Okay. Also, all of the resorts have fun special activities, so they just did an animation experience here behind us where they drew Minnie Mouse. You can also see, um, it's like movies under the stars, like we have outdoor movies where you can actually get picnic baskets, which is really, really neat. You can also find wandering characters. We just met Pluto. I mean, there is tons of stuff that you can experience. And they even have classes like we do over in Walt Disney World. There's just a lot of stuff. And the resort in and of itself has a lot of activities that you don't want to miss out on. So one amenity of staying at Hong Kong Disneyland is that there is a walking path from all three hotels right to the park promenade, which is the promenade in front of Disneyland. So you can walk right into Disneyland from the hotels um, and access the MTR station just across the way, uh, as well as the bus station and taxi station. So we're here on Park Promenade, which is one of the benefits of staying at a Hong Kong Disneyland hotel, but there are other benefits as well. If you stay at those hotels, you might see characters pop up. You have options for special room products. For instance, we have got the Frozen package in our room since we're here to celebrate the opening of World of Frozen. Um, if you book online, there are free room upgrades from standard rooms to deluxe rooms, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also a complimentary resort hotel shuttle that goes through all three resorts and the transportation station on the other side of this promenade. All right, we've made it to our next hotel. This is Disney Explorers Lodge, and this is actually where we are staying this time. Uh, this hotel has rooms furnished and inspired by four unique tropical climates, Asia, Oceania, South America, and Africa. The lodge motto is to explore and dream, and you'll find tons of art and over 700 species of plants. Um, there's actually a walking tour you can take to experience a lot of that art and plant life. You can probably tell by the lobby, it certainly reminds us a lot of Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. Um, we talked a little bit about it being like a mix between Animal Kingdom Lodge and a little bit of Polynesian. And a little bit of Polynesian because there's a lot more character presence here. Um, but it's definitely a very beautiful hotel. We were really excited when we arrived on our first night. Behind the check-in desks, there's a map of the world which is super cute. It's got characters and little Disney movie references all over it. It is fun to look at while you're checking in. Now at all these hotels, they do not have a mobile check-in of any kind. You do have to check in at the front desk the old fashioned way, but uh, it went super smooth. Just make sure to have your passport and a credit card for your incidentals. Also next to the check-in desk is a great place to look for some recreation offerings like that Starlight picnic package or what might be going on for dinner while you're here. With this map, you can get a little bit of a sense of the layout of the hotel. We are here in the middle at the lobby and the different colored sections are the different um, theme sections. So Oceania, South America, Africa. And you can see that there are actually four themed gardens around each of these sections that have plant life that matches the section you're in. They also have really cute names because they're themed to sort of the icon character for each section. Rafiki for Africa, Kevin for South America, Little Hathi Jr. for Asia, and Little Squirt for uh, Oceania. This hotel definitely has a really nice mix of being just a pleasant theme and having some Disney nods. For instance, here in the lobby, you'll find these four traveler's trunks. I love them so much. They're so cute. We've got Goofy, Mickey, Minnie, and Donald. And each one has the character as well as all the different items that they might need when they're traveling. A lot of flight in Goofy's because, you know, he's a pilot. And I, you think Goofy could fly us home? Could he? Maybe. Would I ask him to? Minnie has got a lot of flora and some art supplies where she's been painting local wildlife. Also looks like she's got a little bit of an interest in bugs, um, which is just like a Walt's wife Lillian. She collected butterflies, so I think that might be what that's a nod to. Mickey has swing. Mickey has swung a nautical vibe here. I really love their shoes. They're so cute. Um, and Mickey is clearly just, you know, working on his rope tying. 
He has, of course, brought his Duffy along. And then Donald is prepped for some fishing, uh, which we actually met Fisherman Donald when we had breakfast at Dragon Wind the other morning. Donald has also got a lot of books on birds. Can't imagine why. Just like the other hotels, you'll see a lot of different recreation offerings. Um, really big on balloons and things like that, learning to draw kids, Disney characters. And look at this lounge, Emma. Why haven't we hung out in there? This lounge off of the lobby is called Dreamer's Lookout. Now it is temporarily closed, but it is beautiful. There's a water feature in here, floor to ceiling windows that look out over the grounds and the South China Sea. Just a ton of very comfy looking seating. And typically you can purchase signature chocolates and things like that right here. Hey Emma. Yes? I can almost guarantee that you could win this trophy. What is it? The Dreamer's Cup awarded <laughs> the best tall tale of adventure. Do you think I make up tall tales? I don't think you make up tall tales. I think you tell good stories. Oh, thank you. I got really nervous. I was gonna say, I don't think I've made up a crazy tall tale. <laughs> Maybe like little white lies. An and average some fun. tale. Yeah, just have a little fun. Mix it up. We're going upstairs to see the room. And then we coming back downstairs. And we're gonna come downstairs. Now, I think we should talk about rooms. I think we have one to check out. I think so too. Right now. Yeah, let's do it. The rooms at Explorers Lodge include Standard, Deluxe, Sea View, and the Adventurer Suite. Prices vary by date and room type, and for a stay in November, rooms start at $2,600 Hong Kong dollars, which is around $333 US dollars, and they range up to around $4,500 Hong Kong dollars, or $576 US dollars. The most expensive room is gonna be that $13,000 Hong Kong dollar Adventurer Suite, which runs around $1,700 US dollars. So, Definitely on the pricier side, and I believe that is the most expensive room in the Hong Kong Disneyland hotels. Hello. We made it to the room. You wanna see it? So quick overview, uh, this is our room. Um, it is kind of just a standard hotel room. Now I have seen that this is more American hotel room style than an Asian hotel room style, so it's gonna be more familiar. It honestly just looks exactly like the Disney hotel rooms at home. It feels very comforting. There's a couple key differences though. So we'll start at the beginning, a very good place to start. And we have the door here. Um, regular standard door has the same like lock system that uh, Disney World does if you've been. Um, you've got your actual card reader to get you in, a deadbolt on the handle, and then whatever this is called, a bar lock. Um, we do have the World of Frozen celebration sort of package. You can get like in-room gifts that are super cute. This one came with a door hanger, um, like a rug and some other stuff. You can learn more about that in our World of Frozen video that's up on the channel now. And of course, see the land, which is... So right when you come in is where you find your full-length mirror. Well, you can see me do this. Then you've got sort of your entryway hallway. Uh, this room does have a connecting door, but they do not all have connecting doors, but this room does. So you can get to, uh, you can book two connecting rooms at this hotel if you'd like. Then moving on, we've got our little closet unit here, which in this hotel is an open uh, unit, plenty of hangers and things like that. You can hang stuff up or you can do what Emma and I have done um, and create a nightmare pile. I didn't participate. What I like about this though, look. Your robes and Mickey slippers. Yes, so you do get robes, robes for the whole family. They have child size robes, mm -hmm. and you get Mickey slippers for the whole family, child size Mickey slippers. You can also request more of these if you have the wrong mix or whatever. And on the side of the closet, you've got your coffee station. This is a, is a wild coffee station. I made Emma come and make my coffee because I got really stressed out. But um, this is a really cute print of Donald, Daisy, and Goofy. Cute mugs, which I literally want in my home to drink my coffee out of. Uh, that's your little ice bucket. And then you have your Nespresso, which is a much nicer coffee machine than you will find in Disney World hotel rooms. We were really surprised when we came in here and saw this. The only place we've seen an Nespresso in Disney World is at the Four Seasons, which those rooms start around $1,000. So, you know, you get the idea. Very fancy. And then this, we believe, makes hot water. I, I do think it, it does make hot water because you also get tea. They bring you tea bags and a little cute Minnie Mouse Explorer's Lodge mug. Cold water for you. I feel like an idiot. I was so thirsty all the time. Me too, actually. I cannot <laughs> believe that I we've- it was just hot and totally I can't now. believe that there's literally like filtered prepped water in this room and we've just been drinking nothing. <sighs> room temp. Under the, uh, coffee station you have your little mini fridge um 
which opens on one side, this side. Um, and you can see it's very small, good for leftovers and stuff, but there are like room amenity packages you can order. Moving on into the rest of the room, we have your TV here. Um, it's just a regular TV. We watched a lot of Disney movies. They have channels here that play Disney movies from like, I think it's like 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. They play Disney movies. Um, they have a Pixar movies channel, a Disney movies channel, a Star Wars movie channel, and a Marvel movie channel. And they pretty much just constantly are running. They also have a Mickey Cartoons channel. And they have a channel with the Hong Kong ambassadors telling you about plants and an ad for World of Frozen, which we've really enjoyed. You've got your thermostat, so you have control over your room temperature, recycling bin, and trash. And then your main sort of console here. You've got drawers that aren't super sizable. This isn't the best storage-wise console. This cabinet has pillows. Something to note is that on the bed when we got here were firm pillows. These are plush pillows. So if you like a softer pillow, don't be discouraged when you jump on that bed and the pillow is very firm. You can just check the cabinets and there's softer pillows. We also have this other cabinet with some more storage space and your in-room safe. Then moving on, we have this drum, which acts as a seat and is very thematically appropriate. We also have a desk, chair, and this little info card um, about Disney Explorer's Lodge and how if there's anything you need, you can ask. We've also got some tissue here and another mirror where you can see me do this. Very nice light that fits thematically. There's a lot of like leather straps in this hotel, which feels very Explorer, you know? Very key to um, staying in Hong Kong are these outlets. So this outlet you'll see says for 220 vac appliances only. All of the outlets in this hotel room are going to have um, prongs that we're not used to in the US. Let me find one. So you can see that that is not what our usual plugs look like. So you do need converters. Now they do have um, little converters in this hotel. So you can order them to your room. There's a couple in here already. That's what is plugged in in this outlet. This is an international plug converter. So you can plug a standard US like plug right into this converter. Further note of caution is that outlets in Hong Kong are 220 volts. So if you plug your US appliances into a Hong Kong outlet, it might make it go wacky. So please, please, please do not directly plug any US tech into these outlets. Get yourself a converter of some kind. It's, a, it's an actual like piece of tech. It has like a fan and stuff, but that way we were able to plug in all of our USBs, all of our regular plugs, and it converted the voltage down so it didn't overload any of our tech. And we actually heard from other people on this trip who plugged their tech directly into the Hong Kong outlets that it overheated their tech May their tech go haywire. Some things weren't charging. Some things completely like shorted out. So please, 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 big, big, big note when you're traveling internationally, make sure to check the voltage on the outlets. It could be very bad for your very expensive phone. Next up, let's check out the window. So you've got your standard privacy curtain. This is our view from our room. This is a pool view, a sea view. You can actually see down there the sea promenade that we walked and talked about earlier. Um, you got the amazing mountains of Hong Kong. You can see parts of the city. Um, the view the other way is very wonderful as well. And it's just gorgeous out today. It's absolutely beautiful. And you also have the wonderful views of Explorers Lodge, which is a gorgeous hotel. You can see the waterfalls and the pool. There are other view categories and every room does not have a view of the South China see but these hotels um, a lot of them offer sea view rooms so that's something you come up for next up we have our beds there are two queen beds in this room different bed mixes are available i think there's king bedrooms on the outside sides of the bed you have these little tiny side tables and then above the bed the headboards have these very cool mickey and minis uh, we are in the South America and African section of the hotel. We are actually in African rooms. Between the beds, good amount of space. In general, this hotel room has a really solid amount of space. It's a very spacious room. You can get an adventure log. And I just think that's really cute and sweet. It is really cute. And you can keep track of your adventures and then also keep a list of places you've been to. We've also got your phone here, as well as coupons. So when you stay in a Hong Kong Disneyland hotel, you get merchandise coupons. Now they look very exciting. You see $10 off. Keep in mind those are Hong Kong dollars. It's around a dollar. Um, if not, if they, it's maybe a little bit more than a dollar off of a purchase, um, a US dollar. You've also got this little note about protecting the environment and the interim amenities express. This is an awesome service where you can scan this QR code and order things to your room. So instead of having to call, you can just scan that QR code and ask. Let's talk under bed space. Um, there's a good amount. It's got that middle like block thing, so it's not fully open, but I think that's helpful in not losing stuff. And it's definitely spacious enough to get your suitcases under. Outlet on the other side of the bed too. This is also where you'll find 
um, little on off switches for the outlets and you've got uh, dimmers on these lights actually, which I love when you can dim a light. I actually did it the other night. Then the bathroom is definitely a little more open. You might be used to, we've got kind of a divider into the vanity area. Emma and I didn't have any trouble because uh, Emma gets up earlier than me, but she gets ready in the dark. And she actually got ready with the lights on. It did not wake me up one morning. Like I slept very heavy just because of this little block. However, just keep in mind that the main vanity space for getting ready is in the same space that people might be sleeping. There's also a makeup mirror, which normal this way. The countertop is huge. Emma and I have a bunch of stuff and we had it spread all over the countertop the entire time we were here and we didn't bother each other, I think. Did I bother you? Yes. But you have your sink here, um, hot and cold water. You've got a little facial soap dish, some washcloths, some glasses. Another note about making a green choice, some hand towels. You've got your outlets in here too. This is a bunch of toiletries. You've got adult toothbrushes. We think this is a shower cap, uh, Q-tips, nail file, uh, kids toothbrushes that are very cute because they have Mickey and Minnie on them. We've got a razor and we've got a comb. And this is all for your use in your room. And you can order more of it if you need it. And under the sink, you've got your hair dryer as well as some more tissue. And this is actually a drawer that has storage space in it. The actual commode and shower room is separate. So you've got a sliding door here. This does lock. Um, some hooks for your towels, a glass door shower. There's a non-slip bath mat that is rolled up when you arrive in your room, but you can unroll and use. You've got your regular bath mat to lay out and they were replacing this with the towels. Uh, tons of towels, there's more towels up on a shelf over here. And then you've got two different shower heads. You have your waterfall shower head and a movable, more direct shower head. And you have H2O products. So even though H2O isn't really around in Disney World anymore, you've got H2O, which is shampoo, conditioner, body wash. Um, and they are, pr I think they're the same ones we have in Disney World. They smell the same. Show you water pressure. Ah. So that one, good. And then the other, ah, there you go. I really thought the water pressure was pleasant. Um, I, I like a really aggressive shower, so I didn't have any issues with it. Hong Kong bed science with Emma and Quincy. Jump so fast. Yeah, you have to be ready. This is more firm. This is a much firmer bed than, than any, Disney World. any Disney World bed. It's probably one of the firmest hotel beds that I've stayed in for work mm -hmm. um, that I've done bed science on. Yeah. It is... I'm not a firm mattress girl, mm. and this is very firm. Now, I slept fine, but also I was exhausted, and you did not sleep fine. I did not sleep good um, almost the whole trip. Yeah. But that's a combination of errors. We are 12 hours off of our normal schedule. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to contribute that solely to the bed, but it is very firm. The pillows that are on the bed um, when you get here are very flat and hard, which we already talked about a little bit. Yeah, look at um, this. It's just not. No head sinkage. You okay, see that? It's not a, not even Girl a math. That's how thick that pillow. Not is. even a touch of head sinkage here. Yeah. It's just not. It's not the best. The other ones were closer to Disney World pillows, mm -hmm. um, which unfortunately for Emma, neither of those are the kind of pillows she likes. Mm -mm. But I like the Disney World pillows, so the plush pillows were better. The beds just. We didn't love them because of how firm they are, and we heard other folks talking about how they didn't love them, and especially with the jet lag. For me, the jet lag worked in my favor where the beds didn't bother me because I was so knocked out because I was so exhausted all the time. Mm -hmm. But Emma, with her natural sleep schedule, meaning that at 3 a.m., it was 3 p.m. for her, she could not stay asleep, and the beds not being very comfortable did not didn't help. help yeah. But if you like a firm mattress, this is going to be the best bed that you found. It. Consider bringing melatonin. Yeah, consider traveling. definitely bring melatonin. Uh, you can see some of the stuff that Emma and I packed to bring on this trip to help us out with the travel in our perfect day video where we'll talk about that. Now let's talk a little bit of dining. We are down here at Chart Room Cafe. This is the quick service location at this hotel. We've eaten here a number of times. Breakfast, which is uh, right here. We've got where is it? Uh, abalone 
with shredded chicken macaroni and soup. There is pork chop with scrambled egg. These are French toast bites, Hong Kong style French toast cubes served with condensed milk. Um, and then it also comes with a drink, which for some reason is all the way over here, which I got the Hong Kong style milk tea. Emma went for the Chinese breakfast, which is steamed custard buns, steamed pork dumplings, and shrimp dumplings, and the congee of the day, which is right here. And it also comes with a couple little accompaniments and a drink as well. She got coffee. And, and I'm then, already enjoying it. As a bonus, she also got watermelon juice that has Minnie Mouse on it. is perfectly cooked and al dente. The shredded chicken is a little on the tough side, but still tasty. This for me a little overly savory for breakfast just because of what I'm used to, but I still think a really like hearty. These portions are huge. The portions are wild, and I actually really enjoy that they come with your drink. Um, each of these was around $20. There's also a little salad, um, which I've had a little bit of. It's just really fresh veggies, and it comes with kind of a sweeter, um, like oil-based dressing. The eggs, it's a huge mountain of eggs, and the eggs are super fluffy. I'm not sure I've ever had eggs this good at a Disney World breakfast, just because eggs are typically like made in bulk, which I assume they are here as well, but the, something about the way they're making them is just landing a little better for me. This is like a beautiful piece of pork. It almost reminds me of like a German schnitzel. Overall, just an amazing breakfast. But it isn't just a quick service, it also has a cake shop. And the cakes are very cute. I would love to order a cake like this for a special oh. occasion. Duffy and Lena Bell! That's the one I want. Can we get it? No. But I don't, I'm, I'm dressed like this, and you're telling me I can't get the Duffy cake? Just next door to Chart Room, you'll find Dragon Wind, which is a restaurant that has flavors of rural and classical provincial China, reflecting the five elements of cooking methods. Dragon Wind has a breakfast buffet and a newly launched yum cha themed dim sum lunch buffet that's available on weekends and public holidays. It is all you care to enjoy. We actually had a very delicious breakfast at Dragon Wind yesterday, and we do review that over in our Hong Kong food video as well. This is one of my favorite buffets I've ever been to. It had an amazing mix of food. We we also have World of Color restaurant where you can try out a ton of different cuisines from across the seas, islands, and continents. And one of the main things that's exciting here is they do offer the Duffy and Friends afternoon tea, which is a Duffy themed afternoon tea. This hotel also has Nemo's Recreation Reef, which is a really cute little kid's room. It's totally themed to Nemo with jellyfish lights. And there's a really amazing like ship play area in there. They're playing Disney movies. So similar to that uh, storybook play area we saw over at Disneyland Hotel, just a place where kiddos can get some energy out, uh, supervised by their parents. Now we're outside, you can take a look at a lot of the like rooms up above. Now most rooms do not have balconies, there are a few that do at this hotel and at Disneyland Hotel. Another thing to note is that there is in-room dining at these two hotels if you would like to eat in your room. The pool is called Raindrop Pool, and I must say this is one of the more beautiful hotel pools that I think I've ever seen at like a regular, not luxury hotel. We are right on the South China Sea with the most amazing views. The pool seems so relaxing. They have like beautiful canopies. It's kind of cooler, which is why you don't see anybody swimming, but what a beautiful pool area. <laughs> All right, we have arrived at our final hotel. 
This is Disney's Hollywood Hotel. It is a revamped resort um, that is Hollywood style with Art Deco design, gallery hallways, and lots of photo ops with vintage cars around, which is really fun. We're coming in from the back, so recreation-wise, you can see the piano pool here. Uh, it is piano shaped, and they're playing Christmas music, which is like weirdly making me want to cry. It's just, you know what? You know how I feel about my family. Yeah. Maybe it makes you think of your family. Yeah. Now the rooms at this hotel are in different categories of standard, deluxe, and they have the Hollywood suite. Prices, of course, for this one as well, vary by date and room type. Her stay in November, rooms start at 2,600 Hong Kong dollars, or about 340 US dollars, and range up to around 6,000 Hong Kong dollars, or 770 US dollars. So, if you compare those different prices, you'll notice there aren't really different price categories of these three hotels. They kind of all offer the same rates. Um, and the same amenities. This hotel has the fewest amenities, but it's walking distance to the park still and walking distance to the other hotels. And you get access to all three hotels recreation if you're staying at any of them. Recreation wise, besides the pool, this hotel has a really cool feature with the Disney artistry tour. Uh, this is a tour you can take around the hotel and it does have animated art pieces. So as you're taking the tour, you can scan the codes on the art pieces and they'll come to life on your phone using augmented reality. Emma and I really love the vibe of this hotel as well as the other two. They're all just very distinct but all still have the same level of quality. This hotel has a ton of nods to Disney movies including some new ones because it is recently revamped. So Raya is referenced there as is Encanto and you'll see Marvel movies referenced. Just off the lobby you'll find the Archivist which is a Marvel themed lounge with different snacks and cocktails. The Art Deco vibe is amazing and there are recreations of Marvel props around the room including Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, and Loki's staff. Oh, so cool. The full restaurant here at this hotel is Ink and Plate, which is an international buffet. Uh, and it features a lot of animation nods like Tableware has hand-drawn animation artwork. Um, there's a mural, place settings, food plating, and even the cutlery are all themed with character and story creation in mind. And those are the three Hong Kong Disneyland hotels. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch our perfect day in Hong Kong Disneyland. I'll see you there.